When you shared a private jet with Michael Bolden and Seal, <laughs> the, did you feel that connection when you were with them? <laughs> oh my gosh, this story has gotten so out of hand and it's amazing. Um, <laughs> yes, no, uh, that was the weirdest the flight of my life and I, it was very fun. <laughs> Michael Bolton's a sweetheart. Seal is hilarious and uh, yeah, we, it was... Uh, okay, it was for those funny. who haven't heard, what happened? <laughs> Okay, yeah. so for those who haven't heard, uh, we were invited to this corporate gig, very usual thing, and instead of like flying us all differently, separately, they, they decided to hire a private jet, and I got a phone call being like, you're going to be taking a private jet with Seal and Michael Bolton, and I kept laughing, being like, if the plane goes down, it's a very interesting story of like, what, why were they together? <laughs> but no, it was, it was funny, and then I... I, I yeah, it, Seal ate an entire loaf of bread one slice at a time, and I found that very strange. <laughs> <laughs> like with nothing else? And Just I had like... no filters one morning, and I told that story, and now I feel bad. But yes, he did, in fact, and he had nothing on it. It was plain bread, and it was so weird. Was it rye? Or... <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, like, just wonder bread? It was yeah. gluten-free bread. Yeah. <laughs> um, well. It was just also how it happened. He would, like, remove the slice, and then he'd eat it, and then he would open the bag, and he did it again multiple times, and I, I, I filmed it. <laughs> <laughs> Of course you did. I mean, how could you not? Yeah. I had I had that so story. many questions, and I wanted to like ask a friend later, like, what do you think going on here? But no, um, I should never have told that story. I feel like a bully. But yeah. Seal's a nice guy. He likes spread. Nothing wrong with that. Would you call your music infectious? Because every time I hear a Carly Rae Jepsen song, I just I can't get it out of my head. Oh wow, it would be kind of weird if I was like my music. <laughs> so, no, well, um, I I mean I I do love a, a good hook, and I think I'm always looking for it sort of that thing that gets stuck in your head so uh, mm. but yeah I don't know <laughs> yeah. I'm a bit of an overwriter and overthinker and uh, I, I do kind of obsess over this project of making music I think it's such a gift that I get to do it for a living and then I just I want to do it right so I do work tirelessly and I, I overwrite and then I pick the ones that end up kind of rising to the top for me. Yeah, I think I read that uh, you invite friends over as well to hear some of the songs? Or yes, yeah. you don't just ever trust the label, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> as, we so I, as we look around. So yeah. I, 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 bring, I bring friends, I bring people who are actually going to be kind of, uh, the, I don't know, listening to the music with me. And Yeah, but you, you know, got a friend story that you yeah. trust, Yeah, right? I was going to yeah. say, do you know the ones who are going to give you the goods? Mm. Alex Jillian. I'll name her here. I hope she watches this. <laughs> Alex is the type of girl to be like, are you wearing that outside? She will tell you the truth even yeah. when it hurts. And that's the type of person that when she actually does like a song, it means ten times more because she tells me all the ones she doesn't like first. You know? <laughs> Love it. Yeah. <laughs> Good job. Yeah, she's Alex? A, she's a trustworthy friend. Those are the ones you want. <laughs> Now, you also have a collaboration on this album. How did, how did that come about? Um, I was very lucky. I got to work. It's still kind of a baby, but of a secret. But I, I was invited by my publisher to meet this guy named Asa, who I'd never ever heard of before and he came to my house and we did one of these like uh, preliminary sort of like do we get along kind of tea sort of things and we did we actually uh, got along really well and we had a, a very similar way of looking at music so I went over to his house one day and we just jammed out a song and it came very naturally I love when that happens when you're not like struggling for it but it kind of feels like the song sort of came to you and uh, it ended up feeling really right he sang on the song with me and uh, that's it's actually one of my favorite tracks, so I'm really excited. Yeah, it's exciting when you have a connection with an artist, isn't it? That yeah, I don't think that it's worth doing a collaboration when it's forced. This idea of, like, this person's taken off and that person, let's put them together. I, I don't really stand by that as much as when you actually have a friendship there and something kind of naturally happens between you. You mentioned Secret there. When you had that, when you, when, when you're working on that collaboration, how... I don't think, are you, I thought I read too that you weren't very good at keeping secrets. I'm terrible at keeping just secrets. Just ask Seal. Well, just ask yeah. Seal. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I'm really, really bad at it. Um, but I, I think that's like mostly a good quality, except for when I buy you presents, I'm the type to like, to spoil before you before. open it, I'm like, it's a teacup. But I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, we're going to get Carly Ray to a cut to the feeling with a, a bunch of uh, really tough questions here. Oh, okay. I'm so, excited. First off, we wanted to know uh, if you could cut to the place that you write all your music. Where is that, Carly Rae? Not one place. No. This album was made in Sweden, in Stockholm, Nicaragua, and New York and L.A. Interesting. Nicaragua is the strange one there. Well, yeah. The <laughs> I was in the jungle writing songs, yeah. Wow. <laughs> cut to the song you wish you had written. 
Nothing compares to you. Mm. Oh, really? Prince, Why? Sung by Sinead O'Connor. Yep. I mean, because it's the best pop song of all time, and it just makes you feel all the things. Mm. I constantly go into sessions where I'm just like, can we try something like this? And I can never do it, but yeah. Oh. Okay. Uh, cut to the moment on stage that uh, you'd love to go back to. I think maybe the Mark performance, actually. It was such a thrill to be on stage and be surprised by what was happening. But he just kind of took over the stage and the whole crowd went wild. And we were in the background just singing and laughing. So, yeah. mm -hmm. Is that something you ever get used to, by the way, being on stage? Does it ever just become kind of a day job? I would think it's like the most magical place to, to be, like getting uh, that from it's an audience. good question. The one time I think I started to feel a little bit... Not numb to it, but just it became more day job ish was when we did Broadway because you're kind of going to the same motions every day, saying the same, and it's all timed out very particularly. So I didn't have the same spontaneity that I get to have with my own stuff. So after a while, I would be thinking about weird things when I should be performing. But <laughs> like, what am I going to get to eat later? <laughs> you mentioned Broadway. Yes. Catch your dream role on Broadway. I could never pull it off, but Liza Doolittle. Oh. <laughs> No? And okay. it, my Fair Lady? Yeah, fair lady I mean, course. come yes. on. Yeah. I would say yeah. Fantine, Les Miserables, but... Oh, uh, that's good. <laughs> that's good, too. <laughs> right? That is good. All right, cut to the movie you wish uh, you uh, could have been in. I mean, doesn't every girl dream of being in The Notebook just so that she gets to, like, make out with Ryan Gosling? <laughs> in the rain? Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, my, oh my gosh. gosh. <laughs> yeah. You two oh. need a moment? Are you going to be okay? <laughs> Scene, ready, let's yeah. go. Uh, cut to your favorite song on the album. Uh, there's a song, there's a song called Julian that's my favorite. Okay, who's Julian? We need to ask then. It's more of a metaphor. <laughs> I mean, I did have an ex-boyfriend named Julian. And the first thing I said to him when I met him was, you have a beautiful name. And I thought, I want to put that in a song one day. But I, Julian, if you're listening, it's not real. The eternal love is done. But, you know. You know. <laughs> sorry, sorry. And you're still a nice guy. But. <laughs> okay, hold on. Okay. If it's eternal love, can it really be done? Shouldn't it be eternal? No, that's where the metaphor lies. Is the, the, the whole album is called dedicated because it explores what it means to have that with somebody mm -hmm. and I think even if it's an ex or somebody we all have that person that you know on our deathbed we'll be thinking to the last breath that I breathe <laughs> Juliet <laughs> oh god wow that's heavy <laughs> That is. I can't wait to hear this song. <laughs> Life changing. I feel really sorry for yeah. Julian. All right. Yeah. Carly Rae Jepsen's new album, Dedicated, is available now. The great Carly Rae Jepsen, always great to see you. Thank you Thank so you. much for coming by. <laughs> Thank you so much.